This DVD has been produced to give owners of small and medium-scale woodland an idea of how they might utilize this resource better as a source of income. We specifically look at the options open to farmers who may in the past not have considered woodlands within their farming unit as a potential source of income. Timber has a multitude of different uses, and with the advent of biomass and renewable fuels being used to heat more and more homes and offices, there's a continued requirement for increased supply. Typically, logs and wood chips are going to be the most commonly produced fuel that a farmer is likely to produce. It's a fairly straightforward process to turn standing timber into a range of finished goods that can be used for fencing or building materials, with the waste and any poor quality timber being readily suitable for conversion into wood fuel. The DVD is split into seven sections which will take you through each process in a chronological order. A key element of each section will be ensuring that health and safety requirements are fully considered. The first section will highlight general health and safety requirements and thereafter each subsequent activity will commence with a health and safety briefing order to carry out each process methodically and safely. Health and safety. Working with trees and timber is a hazardous activity, and making sure you are properly equipped is essential. The key items of PPE include safety boots, chainsaw trousers and jacket, ear defenders, hard hat, ideally with a visor, gloves, a high-vis vest is always a good idea. As we progress through this DVD, will highlight key health and safety elements at each section as a reminder of what should be worn when undertaking the activities. It's strongly recommended that risk assessment appropriate to individual sites and activities are also undertaken. Measuring timber volume. If you own land with timber on it that you think might be suitable for utilization, one of the first things that you need to do is ascertain the species and get an idea of what sort of volume of timber is within the area. If you have extensive areas of woodland, it may be more sensible to employ a professional woodland management agent. For smaller areas, it's a fairly straightforward exercise which you can undertake yourself. PPE for this activity is basic. Hard hat, high-vis vest and jacket, sturdy footwear. The basic equipment required includes good long tape measure, up to say 50 meters, clinometers, and several pegs to hold the tape measure. Choose a sample area to measure out. This could be an area of 20 meters by 20 meters. Count the trees contained within this area. Measure the girth of a selection of representative trees within the area to produce an average. Using the clinometer, measure the height of a similar sample size. Fill the data into the spreadsheet on this link and you will come up with a good indication of timber volume. You can use the sample data to extrapolate over larger areas. Felling and extraction. The felling and extraction of timber is not quite as simple as it may first appear. It's a hazardous activity and one which requires careful planning. There are also regulations that you must adhere to and depending on the volume of timber you intend to fell, you may well require a felling license. The detail around felling licenses is covered in detail in section eight. PPE is a particularly important aspect, and during the felling process, you must wear hard hat with visor, ear defenders, chainsaw boots, chainsaw trousers and jacket, and gloves. Felling is an activity best not tackled as a lone worker. However, if you are working alone, make sure you tell someone where you're working how long you expect to be there, and make regular reports back to someone to let them know you are safe.
Make sure you call in when you leave the site. The basic equipment required for safe felling is chainsaw. You should take advice on the correct size of chainsaw required for the job that you're intending to tackle. Timber handling grabs, chainsaw file, wedges and levers, and a tape measure. Fully kitted out tool belts, as shown here, can be purchased from a wide variety of sources. Anyone can purchase a chainsaw, but it is strongly recommended that all operators undertake at least a basic chainsaw course. This will provide you with the knowledge to maintain and operate the equipment properly, how to fell a tree safely and ensure it lands in the desired location. Courses are available from a range of establishments. Further information can be found in the link section at the end of the DVD. If you employ someone on your farm and you ask them to operate a chainsaw, it is a legal requirement that you, as the employer, ensure they've been properly trained. At the felling site, make sure there is appropriate signage to ensure members of the public do not stray into the felling area. Felling can now be undertaken. At all times, you must be fully aware of what is going on around you to ensure the safety of yourself and others. The initial cut is made. This will influence where the tree will fall. Following on from this, the top cut can be made. Once felled, you can snag the side branches. Following completion of the snagging and removal of the top, you can now cross-cut your timber into manageable lengths. Generally, these will be three meters, but depending on your final use for the timber, can be adjusted to suit your own needs. As shown, you make the top cut first and then do a bottom cut. This ensures the saw does not get jammed when the cut is nearing completion. If you need to manually move the cut lengths, then utilizing a set of adjustable grabs can make life much easier and protect your hands and back. You can, of course, remove the tree as a full length if you wish, and this can be done using a number of automated devices that are often attached to tractors. A few examples are shown here. For smaller scale work, there's a machine called an iron horse, which is ideally suited to extracting timber in confined spaces where access is limited, poor ground conditions, or where selective felling is being undertaken. An iron horse is a powerful piece of equipment and is capable of handling significant volumes of timber on a daily basis. It should be noted that although standard agricultural tractors can be utilized to power forestry equipment, it is recommended that some key adaptations are carried out prior to entering a forest environment. These include additional guarding and protection for the operator, upgraded tires capable of working in the forest, protection for tire valves, engine and light protection. Where significant volumes of timber are being felled, extracted, it may be more cost-effective to engage a specialist contractor who will utilize specialist equipment with the capability to move significant volumes. Transport. Depending on how close the woodland is to the final storage processing area, you may be required to move the timber. This can be done using a tractor and trailer, like the one shown here. Careful attention should be paid to securing the load correctly and that the payload of the trailer is not exceeded. Storage and stacking. Timber has a high moisture content when first cut. It will therefore require a period of drying before it can be utilized. The time required for drying will vary depending on its final use. For example, firewood and material to be used for conversion to wood chip needs to be as dry as possible, as this will increase the calorific value and in turn generate a higher heat output. As a guide, timber for firewood and chipping should be dried for a period of at least 12 months. Timber can be stacked as shown with a cover going over the top of the stack during the winter. 
This helps to prevent the timber from getting continually wet, especially if there's a heavy snowfall. During the spring-summer, this cover should be removed to allow air to circulate through the stack and increase the drying process. Timber stacks are extremely dangerous and it's vital that adequate safety notices are placed around them to ensure members of the public do not climb or play on them. Processing and added value. The key items of PPE include hard hat with visor and ear defenders, safety boots, it's also important to observe the safety requirements of individual pieces of machinery and ensure they have been properly maintained and all guards are in place. It is most likely that you will either be using the timber for producing fencing, building materials for your own use or for wood fuel. This could be logs or wood chips. The ideal scenario would be to do both as this has the potential to maximize your return. As can be seen here, a mobile saw bench is an ideal way to produce a range of fencing, building materials from your timber with any waste residue going to the chipper to make wood chip. Mobile saw benches come in a variety of sizes. Some like this one are powered by their own dedicated power sources. This demonstration highlights what can be achieved from one length of timber if you're experienced in the operation of the saw bench. The offcuts can then be used for wood chip material, and the large sawdust waste is extremely popular for animal bedding, particularly the horse fraternity, another potential source of income. This demonstration shows round wood being processed manually into the chipper. There are obviously limitations as to the diameter of round wood that this machine will accept. In this instance, we can see the chip material being loaded directly into a vehicle for delivery to customers. From this size, you can move on to larger scale machines capable of taking much larger diameters of timber as shown here. In this example, chips are being delivered direct to a covered storage facility where they'll be stored prior to being delivered to customers. Processed chips must be kept dry, and as shown here, this can be in a shed, preferably with a solid concrete floor, and one that is wind and watertight. If you intend to use the wood chip for your own wood fuel heating system, then you will probably have installed boiler and storage systems, something like these examples. In both cases, the chips are delivered into the storage facility, where they are then transported to the boiler via an auger. This provides the boiler with a constant supply of fuel. Felling licenses, restocking and grants. Looking at felling licenses first, these are obtained from the Forestry Commission and must be secured prior to any felling taking place. Although there are occasions when you may not require one. The key source of funding for restocking and or creation of new woodlands is the Scottish Rural Development Programme. 